Hello, this is a video about how to set up a Pi-hole DNS service, which is on a Raspberry Pi, and how to use that in conjunction with a PFSense box. In my case, the PFSense is installed on a HP Thin Client. Now, here's the P, uh, Pi Hole admin dashboard. One of the first things you'll need to do is get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. As you can see at the top here, uh, it says what the host name is. You need the IP, so if you log in to your device, you'll be able to see that. Uh, otherwise, you can just go onto the Raspberry Pi device itself, uh, get a terminal screen, and type in ifconfig, and that will tell you what the IP address is. So let's just move along. I'm just going to show you my setup. Now, the setup here is important because you may have your setup differently, in which case the PFSense needs to forward the DNS requests differently. Okay, now my setup in this case, as you can see, this is number one, two, three, which basically explains the connection path. Okay, so my first connection, so the WAN, the internet cable, if you imagine, comes in through the property and straight into the ISP provided router, which anything connected to this will be on subnet one. That's what it automatically hands out. Now next, this is connected by ethernet cable to the PFSense HP Thin Client, and anything this hands out is going to be on subnet two. So different subnets here, as you've noticed. Now the Pi hole, the Raspberry Pi, which is installed on, is also directly connected to the ISP router and that's on subnet one as well. Okay. Now we want to make sure, or we want to find a way where regardless of whether it's PC, laptop, mobile, connected through Ethernet directly to the PFSense or ISP router through Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi, if you're traveling out of the property, uh, and into another room for example then your Wi-Fi connection might interchange between these devices so how do we make sure that regardless of how and which one you're connected to your DNS requests always go through the Raspberry Pi even though it's not on the PFSense device itself and it's on a different subnet so bearing that in mind we're gonna go through that in this case so as I've said, you first need to get your IP address of your Pi Hole, then come over to your PFSense dashboard, and if you go under Services, DHCP Server, you'll be presented with this page. Now, if you scroll down to Servers here, you'll see the IP address of the Pi Hole. This is where you need to put this in. So originally, it'll just say DNS Server 1, and it'll be blank or grayed out like so you need to type that in here so this is your pie hole once you've done that nice and easy just click Save so from the PF sense point of view we're actually done so that's all you need to do if we go over to the pie hole and as you can see it's actually changing queries as we're talking that's because there's other devices connected to this uh, system and in my case the devices may be connected through Wi-Fi to the ISP router. They could also be on the PFSense firewall, but I know that they're not because this is a lab environment and I've specifically got devices connected to this that are in front of me as I'm talking to you right now, but they could be. So now this is set up. So basically any requests that we make will go through the Pi hole. Now I'll give you an example, the computer that I'm going to load the web browser on is on subnet 2. So that's connected to this PFSense firewall. So the PC is on this uh, PFSense firewall and it's got a subnet which is based on subnet 2. Okay. Now I'm just going to open up Firefox and we'll go to search PyHole. And what should happen is you'll see the requests change as I type it, or in sync with anyway. There we 
go. We'll just wait for the traffic to calm down a second. There we go. So there you go. So there's a couple of connections that are in sync with the queries to show that it is now going through the pie hole. Now if I was to turn off the pie hole, which is the DNS server, that's the primary server. Now assuming that you haven't got a secondary DNS that you've input, which you, you could do quite easily, but let's just assume you didn't, then if I turn the pie hole off, any connections to a website will then just come up with an error saying it can't connect. Okay. So how do we check that on command prompt just to make sure that I'm not clicking on a website at the exact time as another device on the system just to make sure it is definitely working. So what we can do is if you type in NS lookup and then a website of your choosing. So I've chosen geekdashboard.com um, because they've actually got a good article on this. Uh, suggest you have a read if you have time. Press enter and as you can see the server is the Raspberry Pi, so that's the host name, which matches here. That's one way we know, but to be absolutely sure that there isn't another device called Raspberry Pi, this is the IP address. So 192.168.1.122. So we know it's absolutely working. If we just switch over to the PFSense, then we can just double check that is exact IP address we put in there so we know everything is absolutely working and all the DNS requests are going through the Pi-hole device as intended. So we're all done for this video, thanks for watching.